the, the personal networking piece of it. How you know how do we you know how do we go about uh, about building out a professional network? I think uh, I think there's definitely a methodical you know methodical systematic way to approach it. So if I was in your seat right now, uh, looking for my next job, I would you know, I would definitely have a list of my you know of my top three. Top three to top five industries. What vertical would I be interested in working? Aerospace, e-commerce, medical, environmental, whatever it might be. Narrow down. These are the three, you know, the three buckets at least that I'd be interested, in, uh, you know, in working. In. Once, you know, once you've gone through that self-reflection and, and determined what would be most interesting to you, just from a, from an industry standpoint, go through and identify the top, you know, top five to ten companies. Each of those, each of those buckets that you'd be interested in. <clears throat> Oftentimes, the students here have pretty much narrowed the industry piece by okay. the programs that they're taking, the certificates that sure. they're working on. So, great, it's really working that next step of Absolutely. identifying the company. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so, once you've got your target company. Target industries, target companies. How it's, you know, let's start. Let's start trying to identify, you know, who we'd like to talk to in these companies. And that's where LinkedIn's going to be extremely valuable. You know, with a simple, a simple bullion search. You know, you can pull up. You know, you can pull up people that are working in your market, doing, you know, doing the the job that you'd like to do, that you know may potentially be hiring. So I'd set some personal goals around networking. What's a bullion search? I've never heard of that. Ah, uh, Boolean search is basically uh, Boolean logic, I guess. So, oh, uh, Boolean. Yes, sorry. My pronunciation may, may have been off. So. Um, so around the personal networking piece, I'd set, I'd set goals for yourself. On a weekly basis, I'm going to identify five contacts at Amazon.com that I, you know, that I, I think could be, could be beneficial to people that I, I should talk to. It takes time, you know, you definitely have to be disciplined, you know, disciplined with networking. I mean, ultimately, guys, finding a job, finding a job is a full-time job. You know, it, uh, it's a, a combination of, of the tools that you use, the time that you put into it, you know, the people that you're able to, you know, ultimately get in front of. <clears throat> so I think after, you know, after you've identified, let's say, 10 contacts at each of these companies, craft a message, you know, almost a templated message that you can use. It's going to, you know, not be too long, but that's going to state your, you know, state your purpose for reaching out, where you're at, and uh, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, be able to be able to invite that person or get that person to, to spend some time with you. you know? So, uh, again, much like your resume, I craft that message. I'd have a couple people review it, edit it, look it over, uh, you know, give you give you some feedback, and really get that message honed in so it's. It's very clear, and very concise, and then start reaching out. You know, start reaching out. You've got your list. Hopefully, by that time, of thirty industry, you know, industry professionals that uh, that you feel might be beneficial to network with. You've got your message crafted. You've got your resume, references, everything in order. Your LinkedIn's ready to go. It's going to be very reflective of who you are. Start reaching out to those people. Start to try and set those initial calls. You know, just a discovery call. I just want to learn more. I'm a student. I'm dying to learn more about what you do. They'll, they'll talk to you. I, I promise you they'll talk to you. If it goes well, you know, push for that in-person meeting. If you get the in-person meeting, every single time you sit down across from somebody, follow up with a handwritten note. With a handwritten thank you letter. I know in the age of social media and technology, that seems uh, fairly esoteric. But it, by far and away, will get a will get a very positive response. You know, in Summit Group, we we have a you know, we have a, a motto or a credo. You know, anybody that we meet with that takes their takes time out of their day to come in and meet with us, we're going to take the time five minutes to write them a thank you letter. And you'd be surprised how many emails we get back. Thank you so much for the for the personal note, for the handwritten note. That's you know we don't we don't see that. That's the first time I've received a thank you like that. From so it goes a long way. So uh, again, anybody you meet with, I follow up with that and answer it. No. And then ultimately. 
hopefully, you know, hopefully through through these discovery meetings, through these conversations, through these networking uh, opportunities, hopefully you can identify a professional mentor. You know, I think that was one of the areas that uh, I didn't see a lot of hands. Uh, I didn't see a lot of hands go up. And guys, a professional mentor can break down barriers for you, can be an advocate for you, and. Uh, be a tremendous, tremendous resource. So I think you know, not anybody's going to volunteer to, to be your mentor. You know, it's going to be being very disciplined, very diligent in your networking, get in front of the right people, or get in front of the right you know people that uh, that you'd be interested in potentially you know holding that role, and, and bring it up. You know, I'm you know I'm new in the industry. I'm really looking for somebody to you know to help mentor me, and you know somebody I can I can lean on a little bit. Are you currently mentoring me? No, no. Yeah, two or three people. Okay, great. Well, you know, if you'd be open to taking somebody else on, you know, would you be open to that? Have those conversations. Start that dialogue. The worst they could say is no. You know, I, I don't have the bandwidth right now to, you know, to, to, to help mentor somebody else. But uh, chances are, you know, they're going to say, yeah, I can help with, uh, you know, making some introductions, or I can help with this, or call me if you have questions pertaining to this, or whatever. You don't need just one mentor either. You know, maybe you have that one person that you focus on for, you know, for a certain area of your career, and somebody else that's you know a specialist with, you know, with something you know, some other entirely different skill set. So, um, so I think that's that's really about uh, about all I had uh, allocated to to cover here specifically. Um, so I guess we've got about 15 minutes. Uh, I'm just open it up for additional questions or. Discussion, thoughts, anything uh, around up today? Absolutely. You talked about Twitter. Yes. And following people. Yes. Do you tweet very often? Uh, yes, I try to. Uh, <coughs> you know, it, basically, you know, I, I utilize my, my Twitter or a company's Twitter handle to really help get the word out. You know, so I'm, you know, we're very active tweeters, I think is the right word. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're on a daily basis, you know, we'll send out tweets about our you know, our hot jobs, new jobs that we've had posted, you know, that, that we'll blast out, you know, blast out via Twitter. Um, you know, I like to post uh, I like to post little industry updates and you know pieces of relevant news that you know that I see uh, that you know, people might be interested, my followers might be interested in. Um, so yeah, I, I would encourage you if you you know if you are, and I encourage you to, to set up a Twitter account. Be an active, you know, be an active uh, participant. I guess you know, uh, um, you know. I think it's also uh, you know, a good way to, to get the get the word out as far as what you're looking for and uh, you know things like that. So, does that answer your question? Um, so, as uh, some of the folks in here uh, are going to Linux Fest this weekend, which I mentioned here, maybe <laughs> it's a, a What's the list and the 
order that you check when you're considering, you know, making that, that call to the sheriff. Uh, absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, I always go to I always go to LinkedIn. Uh, that's you know, pretty much where after we you know go through our internal database, LinkedIn's where I go. You know, quite simply because ideally, if somebody's somebody's taking the time to build out that profile and have the recommendations, have yeah, you can get such a very clear picture of you know what they've been doing professionally. You know, if, uh, I'm looking for an architect, uh, you know, a Microsoft stack software architect. I pull somebody up on LinkedIn and they've got a recommendation from from Smosky. Chances are the, pro the person probably carries a lot of weight, right? So, um, you know, I think you can get uh, I think you can get a lot of very relevant information there. So that's where I go first. Um, I'll, I'll check Facebook. You know, I'll, I'll punch it in there. You've got an open profile. You know, I'll look. You know, and they, every recruiter will. You know, it's uh, again, it's one of those tools that's out there, and and you have to be careful. You know, you have to be careful, and you have to manage it. That's you know, that's your personal information, and if if you have it out there for, for everybody to see, you know, I would I would make sure that, uh, that if you're going to go that route, you manage the content that you have on there, and really you know utilize that as a as a professional you know as a professional means or a professional tool as well. So um, I don't I don't know if that answers. I just wanted to look up your priorities for this year. Yeah. Considering it, you have the qualifications, not just doing it for the first. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, I hope it goes without saying, but if anybody asks you for money to pay for their 
their service walk out. Uh, you know, that's not, uh, not going to be the guy that you want to work for. That's not the way it works. Yes. Do you want to refer to any other kind of thing? You're referring to talk about your job? You know, I don't, uh, I think you can better, I think you can spend some money, you know, in you know, other places. You know, ultimately, I think there's companies out there that are, you know, that are going to be working on those same positions oftentimes. That's just me. I wouldn't. Uh, I definitely wouldn't pay for it. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't pay for this uh, service. Like this. Uh, we make our money on the clients. Like, there's no reason that a candidate should have to pay. So, um, let's see. As far as other potential red flags, um, you know, ultimately, I, I think it's a, you know a bit of a personal preference. You know, I mean, recognizing that this person. Going to be representing you, you know, and what you're trying to accomplish. So, if there's anything, you know, personally that, you know, throughout that conversation and throughout that meeting, something that they say or do that doesn't sit well with you, that makes you think, I don't know if I want this person representing me, and there's probably, probably not the right fit, probably not the right person to, you know, to work with. That's, you know, that's the way I, I, I encourage people to evaluate recruiters. Is, you know, I think of myself much more as a sports agent than as a recruiter. You know, I'm here to understand what, you know, ideally what the, the top 20% of, you know, in my field, technical, you know, technical professionals, to understand what they're looking for, what they're good at, what they want to do, where they have their career. Because ultimately, that's what's going to drive a successful place. It's not, you know, we know what the client's looking for, <laughs> we know what their need is, but you know, that's only one half to the equation. So uh, you know, I think that's I think that's one of the things that sets Southern Group uh, apart from a lot of companies uh, out there that we compete against. We almost take a, you know, almost take an opposite view of, uh, of how we go about things. You know, most companies that we compete with represent a you know represent a set of clients that uh, feed them you know feed them job requisitions and they go out and try and find people to fill. We almost take an opposite approach. Where we're more interested in engaging with the top professionals out there and understanding where they're looking to go with their career and how can we help them. Hopefully, we've got a job, you know, with one of our clients that's going to be a compelling, exciting job that's going to make sense for you. But we're looking to provide more value than that. And uh, I think that's one of the things that, that separates us. Um, you know, if you don't have a great resume, let us help you write your resume. You know, next month we're actually doing a doing a, a resume review seminar. We're having people come into the office. Anybody that's interested, you know, we'll have pizza and some snacks and sit around and do a resume, you know, do a resume review session. Go over, give you some thoughts on, on your resume, make some edits. Uh, we did another event a couple of months ago that was an interview preparation seminar. How to get ready for an interview? You know, we put all this time into the resume and networking and following people and we get to the moment of truth when you secure that interview, how do you make the most of that interview? There's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot that goes into getting ready to, you know, to set yourself apart. So those are some of the services that we're trying to provide, you know, to, to a local talent community. And, uh, you know, and I feel that if you're able to, to provide a value outside of just, do we have a job right now that you might be interested in? That, you know, that that's going to separate us you know, from, from, from the companies that we compete with. So, um, Sasha, are those sessions open? Would absolutely. students here be absolutely. So I, uh, I know I handed it out, but I, I encourage everybody, uh, you know, at the very least, follow our job feed and, uh, and, and like us on Facebook. We've got our, you know, our corporate page up there. Uh, look under the event calendar uh, on, on our Facebook page, and that'll have any of our pending, pending events. I think we just about have one. Uh, a couple of days ago, so it should be, should be available. You just click an RSVP, uh, RSVP for any of those things. Um, that's right, down in Kirkland. That's right, right. 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 Yep, so nice and close. <laughs> um, so everyone's going, right? What day is that? Uh, that will be the, uh, shoot, I, I have to go back to look. <laughs> okay. the 24th, I believe. So. Okay. Uh, and uh, last, I know we're kind of wrapping up here, but uh, if anybody has interest in the recruiting field, uh, you know, we're, we're hiring internally. Uh, we've got several several headcount open uh, for 
technical, you know, technical recruiters uh, that work out of our principal office. So, yes? Um, so a technical recruiter wouldn't necessarily have to be a lot of depth in the, the, the field that a recruiting for no. be a good people person. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not a developer. I'm not an engineer. I've never configured a Cisco router. Um, you know, give, give me a recommendation on you know, why C++ is uh, you know, it's more advantageous than uh, C Sharp, but I, I understand you know, in general terms how, you know, how the software development or product development life cycle works, you know, kind of where people fit in along, the, you know, along that continuum. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think I understand enough to, you know, to, uh, to be effective, I guess, in, in, in understanding from a high level. But, yeah, I'm not going to get into the weeds technically with uh, giving recommendations on, you know, on coding or anything like that. So. Yes. Can you give us the names of some of your clients? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Expedia. Uh, we've got uh, we've got pretty, uh, pretty substantial uh, engagement with Expedia. Uh, a company down in Renton, uh, I'm sorry, Renton called MeteorCom. Uh, very interesting company. Most people haven't heard of. They are developing uh, the equivalent of an air traffic control platform for the railways. Uh, it's very complex, uh, both RF based. Uh, Why do you spell that? Again? Uh, it's meteor, uh, like meteor shower, uh -huh. uh, com, C O M M. All one word? Yes, ma'am, all one word. A handful of uh, kind of small to mid sized uh, companies, and maybe you know, anywhere in the 15 to, you know, 15 to 100 person uh, you know, headcount range. Um, T Mobile, ATT, uh, we've got some engagements with Microsoft. so.